as to how Amazon will address this lack of transparency and how it intends to prevent similar acts of censorship in the future. Sincerely, Richard Sturzberg, president of Penn Canada. Well, that is a wonderful letter of support and a very clear expression of the concerns of free expression, freedom of the press, that's what a book is, transparency, the monopoly powers of Amazon. That's a good letter. But let me, can I show you some good news? Can I show you some surprisingly good news? We got a letter this morning from something called Penn Canada. I don't know if you ever heard of Penn Canada. Uh, you can see right under their, their logo um, that they have a motto, free expression matters. Well, those are my kind of people. And as you can see, it's a letter written to Amazon Canada, plus Amazon in Seattle, plus another, you know, so two different people. It's dated August 4th, which is just yesterday. Can I read, I gotta read this whole thing to you. Re, deplatforming of the China virus by Ezra Levant, that's me. To whom am I concerned? I write today on behalf of the board and members of Penn Canada to raise concerns about your recent decision to remove Ezra Levant's book, China Virus, how Justin Trudeau's pro-communist ideology is putting Canadians in danger from Amazon's online platforms. According to information provided to Penn Canada by Mr. Levant's lawyer, Aaron Rosenberg, Amazon Kindle Direct justified its decision to withhold Mr. Levant's book from pre-order because the book appeared to offer misleading medical information. Quote, due to the rapidly changing nature of information around the COVID-19 virus, Amazon explained, we are referring customers to official sources for health information about the virus. As a result, we are not offering your book for sale, unquote. Following a written exchange with Mr. Rosenberg, Amazon reversed this decision on April 27, 2020. Thereafter, Mr. Levant's book sold well before Amazon renewed its decision to deplatform the book, ostensibly for the same reason cited earlier. Scroll on down, my friend. According to Mr. Rosenberg, Mr. Levant also found out that Amazon's customer service department had offered several justifications for the book's removal, citing third-party complaints and concerns that the book, quote, promotes, incites, or glorifies hatred, violence, racial, sexual, or religious intolerance. As Mr. Rosenberg has noted, these allegations profoundly mischaracterize the book, which is mainly focused on political attitudes and influences, and they misleadingly imply that it is trafficking in medical misinformation. Penn finds the repeated removal of Mr. Levant's book for apparently arbitrary reasons, troubling. As the world's preeminent online retailer, Amazon has unprecedented power to determine which voices are heard and which are silenced. Throughout its global network, such power demands an appropriately broad commitment to defending freedom of expression wherever and whenever possible. The specious reasons given for the removal of Mr. Levant's book also raise larger questions about the transparency and oversight of Amazon's vetting process for books. In light of its gatekeeper role for much of the world's reading public, these deserve more than an ad hoc response. I look forward to hearing from you as to how Amazon will address this lack of transparency and how it intends to prevent similar acts of censorship in the future. Sincerely, Richard Sturzberg, president of Penn Canada. Well, that is a wonderful letter of support and a very clear expression of the concerns of free expression, freedom of the press, that's what a book is, transparency, the monopoly powers of Amazon. That's a good letter. But even more interesting than the goodness of the letter is Richard Sturzberg. Why don't you Google his name, Justin? We'll put the results on the screen. I know who he is. Incredibly, he was the executive vice president of the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation, the CBC. And obviously, he was freedom of speech oriented then and now. He, in fact, has been a critic of the CBC in some of its worst decisions. And I must tell you how delighted I am. Yeah, there he is. Um, is that? Okay, he's got sort of a fun bio. He's calling himself a helper and uh, he's giving himself funny names, but you can see right there, executive vice president of CBC for six years, responsible for all English services, including radio, TV, and online. Uh, before that, he was the CEO of Telefilm Canada, 
that's not a small thing. Before that, he was uh, a big shot at Shaw. Now he's got some jokes in there. You can see education school of hard knocks. So he's got so he's got some he's got a sense of humor. This guy, but he's the real deal. Anyhow, I was very pleased with that letter. What do you think? That's an excerpt from a daily live stream show that I do every day at 12 noon Eastern time. I talk about the stories of the day, play some fun videos, and most importantly, I take your questions and comments in what YouTube calls a super chat. If you like that, please tune in live. It's way more fun that way. You can join the conversation. And every day at 8 p.m., I have a special produce show with a whole monologue and I interview guests and I read my fan mail and my hate mail. You can learn more about both my daily live show and the nightly premium show at rebelnews.com.